Hello, good afternoon. This is John Whitaker, Director of Operations for the National Graphene Institute. This video is being produced for uh, comms and marketing, uh, especially relating to graphene at Manchester, to show our new operating procedures. This is the first day of opening for the National Graphene Institute. I'm going to talk you through um, the first phases that the group users will be uh, greeted with at the entrance of the building to show the safe COVID working. So we're going to be approaching the staff entrance of the NGI, which is actually a part of the new one-way system of operation. Uh, there'll be one way into this particular building and one way out. So this is the large staff entrance of the National Graphene Institute. We have also got the liquid nitrogen compound. What greets users as they first come into the building is a new clean down procedure in the lobby area. So all buildings actually have this signage. They have information boards to show buildings compliance officers and the health and safety executives for the day. Each building will also have a sanitization station which they wash their hands as they enter the building and then Depending on when they're entering the building, we also have an arrangement of PPE for gloves to, to minimise the touch points. Generally, as you enter this building, there is two entrances. One is the south stairwell, which has got a new trafficking system. So to access the laboratories, you would go upstairs. To access the clean rooms, you will go downstairs here, maintaining the two meters distance. You have no alternative to come down these stairs from the upper floors uh, because the exit route is on the north side or the Brook Street side of the building or the Booth Street side of the buildings and that's the downstairs as part of the traffic flow. The lifts themselves also have working practices. So lifts are not to be used in general the front lift of the building is limited to one per people but obviously the goods lift of the NGI being one of the largest on campus can take can take people safely at a distance we're going to pause here and then move to an operational area so we're going to enter the lower ground floor clean room. It's on access control. I've got the appropriate shoes on as well for clean working. We're going to show you some signage which is going to be typically installed. So we've got laminated signage which is safe working of cling film on workstations this helps down with the cleaning process so we've got several of these and then we've actually got the the signage for actually it's mandatory to use um, IPA mixed with the DI water which we make actually in the NGI ourselves, and this will help us maintain the spread of COVID actually clean rooms are incredibly safe for this kind of environment but we're treating these procedures in line with the university's expectations. We're going to move you into one of the gowning areas and you will see some. We're not going to get gowning going, but I can show you some of the trafficking systems that we will have. So as we come into a typical gowning area, we've got one of the technicians getting dressed up in a suit. Hello. Hi Joe. He does peace and love. <laughs> And as you can see, as you enter the double doors into the clean room, there's actually a part of a give way system, which will allow, so there's actually no crossage of people. Uh, and we have a, what we call a bare left policy within the clean rooms. So as we enter the bays in and out, they will maintaining distances of two meters. However, when you enter the clean room, there is a, shall we say, a traffic crossroads where they may have, well have to give way to each other. We're now, Exiting the clean room. Uh, this is normally the main entrance of the clean room, but it's our exit only. Our clean room suits are quarantined here for 72 hours. 
Um, we don't envisage any problems whatsoever, but we're just following normal university guidelines in introducing uh, some quarantining, especially for waste management and especially for the laundry service. We use a specialist um, cleaner for our micro clean suits, however, it doesn't differentiate from some of the standard laboratory suits. And then the usual exit is actually a controlled exit as well through the normal cleaning door. Just following a standard routine now. This is a typical routine that you would go through at the university. We have a footprint on the floor which determine where we will stand. We'll call the lift. This is a, a much smaller lift, fairly typical of a passenger lift at the university. And as you will see, as the lift opens, we're limited to one person in the lift. And we've got the standard university COVID working practices. We're now going to go up to the upper floor. So here we are on the third floor of the National Graphene Institute. You will see the seminar space, which is normally houses 80 to 100 researchers for the weekly seminar, has completely changed into a limited space. This is where people will sit down and this is their hot desks. We've got the kitchenette with some standard protocols foot signage for entering kitchens, directional signage for toilets and then we on this particular floor we have our high temperature furnace lab. This is not commissioned at the moment but just to give you an idea of the processes or the enabling processes that we go through is these are our checklists for the laboratories. Um, and then once the area has been cleared for research, it gets signed off by the director and permitted for use. So here we are on the third floor of the NGI. We are now following the exit process. We're going to go down the one-way system from our north stairwell. Nice view of McD. So this is part of the one-way trafficking system out of the building. So we leave from the third floor or any floor and only exit down on the north well stair access. And we move out into the reception. through the exit doors, which is where there is no entrance. 